Hey guys, Jim here. We're going to do a new Decepticon video. Uh, for those that don't know, the Decepticon 2 has now released, and I have that sitting here in front of me. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, and we're going to talk a little bit about the comparisons between the Decepticon 2 and the Decepticon 1, and see if there are any pros and cons for either one, in case you're trying to decide which one you want to buy. By the way, if you want a Decepticon 1, you really better hurry, because they only made 500, no, how many was it? Uh, oh, mine was out of the first run. I think the second run was like 300, and I don't think there are very many left, so you don't want to wait too long to make that decision. All right, so before we get into anything, what's going to really blow your mind about this one is it's slimmer. It is tremendously lighter in its weight, but it's a bigger knife. Now, what I've got here is the standard variation, and then I have the custom variation that was made for me. And as you saw on the cover shot for the video, the reason why I made this is the very first Transformers that I had when I was a kid. And that was when the Generation 1 Transformers came out. My very first one was uh, Skywarp. He was one of the Decepticon jets. His colors were uh, gray, black, and purple. So I asked... When the uh, pre-order came up for these, if uh, Mike at Custom Knife Factory wouldn't mind doing one for me with purple interior. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I think we could do that. No problem at all. Because now they're doing custom modifications based on customer requests. So that's what I decided to do. So if you're out searching for one of these, uh, somebody posted on my Instagram the other day. They're like, oh, I've been searching everywhere ever since I saw your picture and I can't find it. Yeah, the, the purple doesn't exist. This was a one-off that was made for me. And then they, uh, they were kind enough to mark it right down there for me. So if you want a Skywarp, sorry. Um, I'm sure that they'll probably do a purple for you if you asked, but um, I... Kind of want to keep that special. So this is the way they come from the quote-unquote factory. So what you're getting here is a blade length of 4.375 inches. And that makes it just a little bit larger than the original Decepticon. So that also means that the handle has to be longer as well. The overall length, fully open, is 9.625 inches which they list on their website millimeters is 245 millimeters. Holy shit, that's really, really big. We put it next to the original, and we see, because we have to put them butt to butt, because that's the way everything in the universe should be, and you see that, yeah, you've got a good, uh, I'd say a good quarter inch longer on the Decepticon too. You'll also start seeing a lot of the differences. And it's not just in the blade. A lot of people expect it only the blade to be different. If you look at the construction of the handles, we'll start there. You'll see that these are very, very different designs and also different finishes. If you look at the Decepticon 1, you've got a lot of bead blasted areas. And then they have done satin finishing across the flats. That does not exist here on the Decepticon 2. Everything is done and that monochromatic theme where everything is done in a bead blasting. Now you could very easily have a knife pimper, take the flats and give a nice satin finish. You might even be able to do it yourself. That's entirely up to you. The other big difference is going to be in the pocket clip. Now again, I want you to realize there's a big price difference. These are $1,100. These are $880. So some things would have to change in order to drop the cost. So let's take a good look and see. So here we have the sculpted milled 3D titanium clip. Here we have a bit more of a spring clip done in titanium. Now it is still a sculpted clip. Take a good look and you'll see it is a custom sculpted clip where they just get very thin over toward the duck bill here. So it acts more like a spring clip, but it is still a 3D sculpted clip. So they didn't really go cheaper, cheaper, um, but it was obviously a lot less work than doing all the milling and design work that's been done on the number one. Um, the hardware is a bit different. It's not all custom hardware like we saw on the original. I don't even want to say that this was custom hardware. It's just a little bit different. That flat face really went well with the overall design. And these uh, have a rounded head to them. No big deal. Not sure if that was done for cost savings or not. But here's the opposite. We have a, uh, the standard pivot that we have in the original. And this up to Con 2, you get a custom pivot. It's very close to the one that's in the uh, asymmetric knife and also now in the rabbit. So uh, 
you know, a little bit more expense was uh, was spent there. So there they are side by side. Now let's get the blades open. Oh, you wanted to see the thickness, I'm sure. Yeah, there is a big difference. I actually prefer the heft and the weight of the Septicon 1 because there's something about it. When you look at it, it looks like it should be heavy as shit, and it is. This, which looks even bigger, you would expect to be very heavy. And the, the first time I picked mine up, I went, holy shit, I cannot believe how lightweight this is. The action is every bit as good. You guys know that uh, Custom Knife Factory does an amazing job with their bearing pivots. They're extremely, extremely smooth. Uh, you do still have a lock bar insert here. It's more visible on this one. You see the steel lock bar insert here. Here, it's not as visible, but if you look in there, you'll see that it does indeed have one. I don't know if the camera is really focusing very well, but it, it is in there. All right, so we wanted to talk about the blades. Flat out, I prefer the grind on Decepticon 1, and I prefer the blade shape of Decepticon 2. So you have this really cool upswept sheep's foot for Decepticon 2. You also get a thumb hole which is a little bit more usable. So if you don't want to flip it open, which I can't imagine why you wouldn't, uh, you can open it manually with the thumb hole. And you can still do that with this one. It's just, I don't know, maybe it's because I never really did it. Yeah, I guess it is just as easy. I guess I just never really did it. So here we have a compound grind on Decepticon 1. Here's your primary bevel. Here is your uh, secondary flat bevel, or sorry, flat grind up front. Then your top swedge up here. They've done that milled line here and a little bit of a swedge across the, down the uh, spine there. This is just a very simple, I believe that's a flat grind. It looks like a flat grind to me. It could be hollow ground, but it looks flat ground to me. It's, it's one very simple high flat ground. Uh, high flat grind, that's it. So they definitely spent less time working on this blade and time of course is money so that's one way they were able to lower the cost on Decepticon 2. It will freak you out if you have Decepticon 1 Decepticon 2 will freak you out to the point where I waited like two full days before I carried mine and now that I have I could tell you that, yeah, I do like the fact that it's lighter weight. It does make it a bit different because there are days that I've wanted to carry my Decepticon and just went, you know what, I'm wearing shorts. It's a really, really heavy knife and I've got, you know, my wallet and everything else in my shorts already weighing them down. And this, I mean, it's still no lightweight EDC. I, I don't want to mislead you, but it's a good at least two to three ounces lighter weight than Decepticon 1 even though it's even bigger. Now, for a lot of people, that's going to turn you off. Uh, there are people that live in states where you can't carry over a four-inch blade or you need to have a concealed carry permit in which to do so. Keep that in mind when you go to order it. Speaking of ordering, it's a lot easier now. You don't have to go to fromrussiawithknives.com and pay 60 bucks in shipping. You'll pay the exact same maker's price on the knife and very inexpensive standard shipping from the U.S. if you order from either gpknives.com or from knifecenter.com. And when you do a Google search on these, Knife Center is usually the one that pops up first. So if you're looking for one of these, that's, that's the most affordable way to do it. And they've got a great return policy. Um, they're really good people to work with, both websites, fantastic people. Let me show you the anodizing that they were kind enough to do on mine. It almost has like a vintage look to it, and it, that's something that if you look at the customized variations of any of their knives, you'll notice that's how they prefer to anodize. They don't really do a solid uniform color. They like to kind of give you a, uh, a muted or even aged look to them. My particular one is numbered 96 out of the 300 that are being made. They did a great job all the way around. Looks fantastic. Looks a little bit battle-worn, the way they did the uh, anodizing. You can still barely see the logo, but there it is. It's obviously a lot more prominent on the non-anodized variation. I like how they've done this. Uh, if you have the original Decepticon, you have a very small lanyard opening coming off the backspacer. 
Here the backspacer comes way up high, they cut the frame way down low and the interior frame way down low to give you more room. So the way they've done this sandwich, uh, my purple areas are your inner frame, that is your standard titanium frame that they have obviously skeletonized and cut away. Then you have these titanium scales that overlay that, that are also skeletonized, beveled, and uh, uniquely polished. And they sandwich all that together with a semi-floating backspacer. So you have a lot of layers that go into the manufacturing of this knife. And it's funny, if you go back to my Decepticon 1 video, and you read the comments, aside from, I don't know how it's happened, but they've, some people have gotten off on a tangent about butterfly knives and, and balisongs. But if you read, a lot of people went, I just can't see how you could justify $1,100 on that damn, damn, dear, 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 dear Decepticon. It's an expensive ass knife. That's the way it is. There's a lot of work that went into the manufacturing of this knife. Think of just how long it took to design it. Then to sit down and put this into a program that will allow the CNC to cut all of this. Then all of the machine time, because remember, CNC time, it's, it's time is money. You know, you're paying for all that CNC machine time to do all of those complex layers. And then all of the hand fitting all of the hand finishing. Remember, these are all going to be, all the components for their knives are machined in China. Then they send all the components over to uh, Moscow, where they do all of their hand fitting and assembly in Moscow, Russia. So, I, listen, I don't know how much uh, labor is in Moscow. My, uh, labor is not very expensive in China. We all know that. But they're doing all the hand fitting, the stop pins. And by the way, the same kind of hidden stop pins are in here. Let's take a good look here. Focus. May not focus with the other knives back there. Okay. All right. So you got the same hidden stop pins that, that hide when the blade is open and semi-hide when the blade is closed. So they're hand fitting the stop pins. They have to hand tune the detent and set the detent, press fit the detent, tune that, tune the action as best they can to create these incredibly smooth and fast knives that they're doing. Every blade is perfectly centered. The fit and finish on all of them is flawless. I've never seen one, and I own, I think now, every single model that Custom Knife Factory has made. I haven't done the review yet on the Rabbit. That'll be coming soon. I have that. I haven't done the review yet on the... Uh, the morph that will be coming, but I have that. And the fit and finish on every single knife, whether it's one of their inexpensive four to five hundred dollar knives, or their eight eighty to eleven hundred dollar knives, they're fantastic. They're flawless, and that's what people are discovering. So if you can't justify it, hey man, that's on you. You guys have seen the knives that I own, the level of, of uh, collecting that I've gotten to. I'm very, very thankful and fortunate to have been able to do that. And I would put these up against any other knife in the same price point easily. So yeah, I'd put that up against any $1,100 custom. I'd put this up against any other $900 custom, period. Because they're made that well. And if you don't believe it, you need to try one out for yourself. Get it in your hand. Flip it. Feel it. Give a nice, close inspection. And you look at all of the important points. There's no blade play in any direction. When I unlock it, there's no side-to-side -side action in that pivot. The blades are perfectly centered. The action is perfect on every single knife. The lock geometry is fantastic. Nice early lockup without being, oh, hey, look at me, 8.5% lockup. Really good, solid lockup, early, but not too early to be creepy. People do get freaked out sometimes when it's a little bit too early. I get that. Every component is fitted amazingly. And you know what? They're unique. They're different. They're not like every other knife in your collection. And that's why we collect some of these knives, because they are different, because they are special. Are you going to carry a Decepticon as an EDC? Probably not. It's probably not practical for that. They're very large. They're very heavy. 
They're very flashy. I think this has more of an EDC style blade profile now. I've got a lot more belly to that blade. It's a lot more utilitarian. But I can't see a lot of guys going out and, and just hammering on one of these and really being super tough. Can it handle it? Yeah, most likely. It's, I mean, it's even got a very strong supported tip on there. They've done a great job of making these a useful knife. But a lot of people are just going to carry it occasionally and stare at it in a glass case. Totally fine. Me, I'm the kind of guy that carries my shit. Will they see hard use? Nah, probably not. But they're going to get used. Something gets in my way, I got a cut. That's in my pocket. It's going to get used. S35 VN steel. Great quality steel. Nothing wrong with that. It's not going to hold an edge super crazy long, but good enough for the average Joe. It's easy to strop. It's easy to resharpen if you need to. Not a big deal. So if you guys are considering one, those are my thoughts. Um, as far as my preference, I still lean a little bit more toward Decepticon 1 because of the heft and the weight. But the Decepticon 2 is very quickly uh, growing on me to be uh, as much of a favorite as the 1 is just because of the fact that it does have this really, really great blade shape. I really like that blade shape a lot. Uh, yes, they're big. Yes, they're a bit unwieldy. But who gives a shit? This is like a folding fantasy knife that's not even in a fantasy knife kind of price range. You know, we're not spending ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars to get our hands on one of these. It's not like picking up, you know, a full hand built custom from from Gil Hibben, you know, where you're gonna spend ten thousand dollars to get that privilege to have that cool fantasy knife that really you're gonna put up on a pedestal. This is something that it, for a lot of people, a lot more easy to afford. It's something that you can carry, that you can use, and you can show off and have fun with. Let me tell you, you're going to meet up with a bunch of your knife buddies, and you pull something like this out, they're going to have a, they're going to have a great time admiring this thing and playing with it and flipping it and going, holy shit, there really is a lot of work that goes into this. So, you know what? Sometimes you just need that fun knife to, you know, just kind of bring along with you and screw around with. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now. Thank you so much for watching, as always, and I will see you guys on the next video.